As we prepare for worship today, we ask that the Holy Spirit reveal your presence during the service. As we attend worship today, may we come seeking you and offering up high praise and exalted worship. Make the worship leaders and pastors sensitive to how the Holy Spirit is working in the lives of those who are participating in person and online. We pray that your spirit will convict each of us of our sin, that our hearts will be stirred, and that we will break free from captivity. We pray for those providing music, touch them so that praises are lifted to your heavenly throne. May those who do not know you as Lord and Savior, come to a saving relationship with you. May those who came with doubts or apathy find assurance of your presence, finding hope and healing. Help all who are present possess a hunger for you, a forgetfulness of time, and an uninhibited expression of love for you, displayed with reverence.
Good morning. First things first, as a way of a safety announcement, I'm just wondering if the ushers know where the fire extinguishers are. Uh, at 8 o'clock this morning, um, Mickey was on fire, okay? <laughs> In the chapel, on the piano. I mean, I, 45 minutes later, the keys were still hot. So, and so Mick... Thank you. God bless you. We just need to make sure we know where the extinguishers are. Thank you, gentlemen, in the back. <laughs> hey, tomorrow, 96 years old. Audrey Ord turns 96. <laughs> tomorrow. I wish you could see her smile. <laughs> God bless you and birthday blessings to you. By way of our parish announcements, uh, on the back is the weekly calendar for the week of this, this coming week. You can look those over. I was talking with Pastor Mark. You can see that he's not here today. He's about uh, 30 yards that way over in the parsonage recovering from the virus. Okay, If you didn't know that, he's got COVID, had it asked if I could help him fill. So I'm the pinch hitter today, okay? God willing, he will be back next week. He did ask me to just re-emphasize again next week's community service at 8 o'clock. We'll be having our regular worship service in the chapel, and then at Struthers Library Theater uh, will be the 1030 service where so many of the churches in the community come together. It's sponsored by the Warren Area Ministerial Association, and we look forward to having that in our, in our neighborhood. And then, beginning August 14th, for a couple of reasons, but uh, worship services will again move up into Founders Hall beginning on the 14th for both 8 o'clock and 10 o'clock worship. Uh, air conditioning is working up there. It'll be wonderful. It'll be a little bit more informal, so come. And if I, Mickey is the chair of the worship committee, and I can't see her, so I'll just listen. But I think, uh, are there refreshments during that worship time? If you want to bring them. <laughs> Did you hear that? Yes, there is. If you want to bring them. <laughs> so I guess it's, a, it's your own brown bag lunch if you want to do that for, for worship. Anyway, uh, beginning the 14th, be, there'll be, Mark will have more announcements regarding that as well. Um, I said this to the 8 o'clock folks. I'll share it with you this morning. Uh, the COVID thing hasn't gone away, and we're not going to live there, but we have to be mindful. And so... As you leave today, and I told the 8 o'clock folks I, I will not be shaking hands today, know that I love you. I'm a hugger and a handshaker, but not today. So uh, as you leave, uh, just know that I send you God's grace and God's peace, but um, we'll keep the handshakes away for that, okay? Uh, I think that is the announcements that I have for this morning and this day. Anything else that comes to my mind, I'll share with you before the service is over. As you, are, as you are able, let's stand together for our opening hymn.
Welcome in. Come with your load of troubles. Bring them home to a community of forgiveness. Bring them home to God who lightens our load, who gives us hope for the future, courage for each day, a song for this moment. Please be seated. Jesus, teach me what I need to know. Guide and lead me where I need to go. In everything I say and do, teach me how to love like you. Shine your heavenly light, touch me and open my eyes as I go through the day. Lord, let me follow your way. Jesus, teach me where I need to go. Guide and lead me to go in everything I say and do. Teach me how to love like you. Lord, the sound of your teach me what I need to know. Guide and lead me where I need to go. In everything I say and do, teach me how to love. Teach me how to love. Teach me how to love like you. I was thinking earlier about uh, how blessed our church family is. The many, many musicians, the many, many talented individuals that serve this church. And when Hope was practicing with Mickey a little after nine this morning, I went in the back and, and I just, I told Hope, I said, I think God uses your voice. It just filled the sanctuary. So hopefully you felt that. And, and I had no clue what, what Hope was going to be singing today. When I started my message, once I knew that Pastor Mark would not be here, and uh, both of her songs certainly align right up with what I'm going to be sharing with you in a little bit. Thank you so much. Our Psalter is found on pages 824 and 825. It's Psalm 103. As you're able, I invite you to stand. Bless the Lord, O my soul. And all that is within me, bless God's holy name. Who forgives all your iniquity, who heals all your diseases. The Lord, who works vindication and justice for all who are oppressed, has made known God's ways to Moses. Yeah. 
God's acts to the people of Israel. The Lord will not always chide, nor harbor anger forever. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is the Lord's steadfast love toward the faithful. As a father shows compassion to his children, so the Lord shows compassion to the faithful. As for mortals, their days are like grass. They flourish like a flower of the field, for the wind passes over it, and it is gone, and its place knows it no more. Please be seated. When you get used to something and then that something is not there, or a better way of saying it, when you get used to someone and that someone is not there, you notice it. And uh, in our prayers time this morning, we want to remember and thank God for the work that Barbara does in our office as a church receptionist. Uh, there's never been a time that I haven't called and thanked her for uh, helping me find something or look up something or she's just been wonderful. I guess from what Leo says, she will be back tomorrow. Is that correct? Yeah. Amen. So we give, we give God the praise and the glory. She has had some surgery. She's home. She's recovering and will, is planning to be back to work tomorrow. We again, as I mentioned, want to remember as well uh, Pastor Mark as he's recovering home from COVID and pray that it uh, it affects everybody differently for longer periods, shorter periods of time, but we pray that this is a short bout and that he can be back uh, doing the things he enjoys doing as well. Be in prayer for, again, the ministries of this church, uh, the people who are involved in ministry. We would be, I'm sure I would miss, but there are so many people involved in how everything comes together in ministry in this church. Uh, the, the, the visible things and the people who kind of stand behind the scenes uh, but are every bit as important in the ministries that they perform in the life of this congregation. So we're thankful for that. We're thankful that we can be together this morning and worship. Uh, I'm going to, I don't see any prayer requests in the basket, so I'm just going to ask us if we can take just a couple moments and clear our minds, clear our hearts and our thoughts, and then I'd like to lead us together in prayer this morning. Would you pray with me? God of all creation, creator of all things. When you placed your bow in the sky following the great flood, one of your covenants with us was that you would establish the seasons, that there will always be spring and fall and winter. And here we now are in summer, glorious, beautiful summer. And so we thank you for the long days of sun and storm, for so many days of growing and warmth, we delight in the laughter of children playing and people gathering for food and music, fun and togetherness. In this season, may your Holy Spirit invigorate our steps. Show us, O oh God, the flowers of your beautiful creation 
and in our own lives help us to bloom forth even as the lilies of the field display their beauty. And Lord, as the world rushes by, we need, we want to slow down and find meaning in you. Our desire is to know your will for our lives. Father, we live in an age of information, and we ask that your spirit would guide us and help us to stop and to listen and empty ourselves to find the simple and true message about your love for every human being alive. There are many things and many people for whom we pray, some that are silently and quietly upon our hearts. <clears throat> we do pray for peace in our world peace in our homes and families and in our churches. And when we are tempted to rail and to curse and to fight, help us to look to Jesus, the Prince of Peace. Enable us to do all that we can to show forth the same kind of love and forgiveness, mercy and grace that Jesus demonstrated. And then, Father, when the time is right, help us to get out of the way. Help us to get out of your way so that you can accomplish what you desire through us or in spite of us. We lift before you this day our friend, our minister, and our pastor, Mark, who is recovering from this virus that has swept throughout not only this community, not only this country, but around our world. Restore to him the strength that he has known in the past and the joy that he shares with us in ministry to which you have called him. And be with Karen as she ministers to his needs. And, O oh Lord, give her an extra measure of godly patience. May we bear the fruit of your spirit, love and joy, peace and patience, kindness and goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. We pray for Barbara this morning, thanking you for the reports that we get that she is recovering well and will be back amongst us, back in the office, working with us and through us. Lord, for those who are receiving treatments or recovering from surgeries, those awaiting word of a diagnosis, for those who experience loneliness or sorrow, guilt or uncertainty, we call upon you, our rock, and our strong high tower. Continue, O Lord, to speak to us in song and in music through the gentleness and the kindness of our brothers and sisters, and most importantly, through your holy word. We pray this in the strong name and the gentle spirit of your Son, Jesus the Christ, who taught us to pray this way. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
for the privilege we have in giving. We give you thanks, O God, for unto whom much is given, much is required. And so we give it in faith, believing that you will take these gifts and use them and multiply them in ways that are unknown to us, but always known to you. Bless them, use them, bless us and use us that we might be a blessing to others in the name of Christ. Amen. Please be seated. Some of you came to church this morning just like this. This is the way you came. Some of you came to church just like this. I think you've got the message. I believe that the message this morning, this message is for someone here today or listening online as it's being recorded that I think that really needs to hear this message. I don't know who that someone is, but God does and that's what I'm counting on today. Maybe you didn't know that it was for you when you awakened this morning and you did your normal Sunday routine. You went out. You had your coffee, then you went out and turned on the keys in your vehicle, you arrived here, walked through the doors, and you just thought that this is another Sunday morning like so often you come, like so many other Sunday mornings. You'd see your friends, you'd do a little singing, do a little praying, hear a little preaching, and then you'd head back to your home and get on with the rest of your day. But I believe in my spirit today, and after Pastor Mark contacted me, that God's spirit has encouraged me to share this message today for someone who's here or watching. And maybe it's more than just for someone. Maybe it's for several someones. I want you to know that I've delivered this message many, many times in the years I've shared in ministry to myself. With those thoughts now, I'm going to ask you to listen and hear the word of God as recorded in Matthew's Gospel, the 11th chapter, verses 28 through 30. Hear Jesus speaking. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray a prayer for illumination. Father in heaven, as you open our ears and our eyes and our minds and our hearts, Shine your precious holy light into our souls, not to blind us, but to guide us. And by so doing, may we not be the same person and the same church as when we first came through the doors this day. Amen. Now be honest with me for a minute. When's the last time you felt like that candle? <laughs> I mean, you do pretty good when one end is lit, but there are times in our lives when we are burning the candle at both ends. Was it a couple weeks ago maybe you felt like that? A couple days ago? A couple hours ago? When was the last time you feel just burned out or drained or exhausted? When's the last time your candle was on fire at both ends? A few years ago, Nettie and I were having coffee with our son at a cute, quaint little coffee deli, oh, several miles east from here. And to this day, I cannot recollect the words or the discussion that prompted two words 
that our son Nathan would speak, but I believe that God used him at that moment to speak to me so that today I could speak to you. And what he said in those two words, I instantly thought, yes, that's it. It struck a familiar chord. And he used the words emotional exhaustion. Emotional exhaustion. What I came up with was all sorts of things that contrib can contribute to emotional exhaustion. Good things. Bad things. Bad things, good things, in any order. In any combination. With warning signs or with no warning signs. Sometimes we see it coming. Other times we get blindsided. But perhaps this will help clarify to you what I'm trying to say. I've found myself over the years turning on the news first thing in the morning. I'll be able to tell by some smiles on faces if I see anyone connecting with what I'm saying here. But I enjoy my cup of coffee. I turn on the news at 7 o'clock. It goes to 7.18. There's no commercials till 7.18. At 7.18, I turn off the TV. You know, and I was telling the 8 o'clock people, I said, I turn off the TV. Well, that was the old days. Now you do this. <laughs> it's how I begin my day. It's like the comedian Kevin Hart says, it's what I do. <laughs> it became a habit. So at 7.18, I turn off the TV, and when the first commercial arrives, but I, I have to confess that I've also checked, already checked my iPad. I've looked at my phone. I've taken the paper off the front step and looked at that. I've gotten in a round of Wordle, for those of you who do that. I've looked at the newspaper. I've checked the obituaries first. <laughs> I read the headlines and the court reports. And throughout the day, I find myself periodically, if I have time, if I'm not engrossed in something, checking back to see what's going on. What's new? Has anything changed? As the day winds down, my confession, TV, again, almost hoping for something new. I watch maybe a football game, a baseball game, a documentary, Last night at 11.30, it was Billy Joel in Rome. <laughs> I read a few more, email, e more emails. I read a few more Facebook tests, texts. And when I go to bed, I lie there. And I wonder what's wrong with me. And there are times that I must say that I feel emotionally exhausted. I shouldn't have to wonder. And if you can identify with any of that, then you'll know what I'm saying. And that message, this message may be for you. But there's something else. If this isn't, maybe the next part will be. But what you see I've filled my mind with, on and off, not every day, but many days, throughout the day, is news reports of droughts and wildfires and floods and January 6th and new COVID variants, and war in Ukraine, and nuclear threats, and high-profile prisoner negotiations with Russia. But you see, there's also things that like declining personal investments, and 401ks, and pensions, and consumer price indexes, and inflation, and trade talks with China. And then you realize you have to reschedule your dentist appointment because your eye exam is at the same time. And then there's the hair appointment you got to squeeze in. And so sometimes even vacations become more work than fun. Phew. I mean, it's a wonder we haven't all lost our ever-loving minds. Think about it. And Jesus says, come to me. Come to me, you who are weary and burdened, and I'm going to give you rest. Why don't we come? Why don't we come more often? Why don't we immerse ourselves with the one who wants to give us rest? I had a friend one time telling me, he said, John, maybe you just need to dial it back. 
reboot. But you know what part of the answer is? And I'm not saying this is everything. But part of the answer is that we feel it's our responsibility to make everything right. And we take it out of God's hands and we want to be in charge. No one else can do it like I can. No one else understands it quite like I do. And it becomes about me, not Jesus. And so Jesus extends to you and to me, to us, an invitation. He says, lay it down. Put it down. Come to me, all of you who labor and are burdened and weary. And I promise to give you some rest, spiritual rest. After all, we, we believe that he is the way, the truth, the life. But we still want to be in charge. We still want to be in control. Now, in our lives, mind you, there's a lot of good stuff. And that's good. That's wonderful. Much of it is even necessary stuff that has to happen. But I want to tell you, it drains you. Little by little. And I don't, it doesn't matter. We're just in different camps, but some people who are still working full time and some people who are retired, we're still lots of stuff. And you find yourself growing weary and tired and then wearier. And you know what St. Paul writes to the Christians in the new church in Galatia? He says, let us not become weary in doing good. Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not, what, give up. Let us not become weary. So many things can cause exhaustion, emotional exhaustion, good things, bad things, things of the mind, physical things, environmental things, financial things, spiritual things relationships, disappointments, and a dozen other things that are on your mind that we haven't even talked about yet. Now, I don't know about you, but sometimes when I'm overtired, and we all get overtired, sometimes you get so, almost so tired you can't sleep. That doesn't make sense, but that's what happens. That's what happened to me last night. But we get giddy. Does anyone else, I want to know, does anyone else get giddy if you, no, not just you and me, Okay. <laughs> Well, here it is. <laughs> Some time ago, Nettie and I, we got giddy. <laughs> we were driving home from Easton. Rebecca was in the back seat. Our, son, our Down's Syndrome daughter knows the Easter story backwards and forwards verbatim. She knows the entire Easter story. She knows the liturgy of Holy Communion. In fact, when she was here at the 8 o'clock service last time I preached last month, um, she helped Daddy share in the, in the communion service. But she can say that for bad. You know why? She was a good Lutheran for 24 years. <laughs> and now she's your sister as a Methodist. <laughs> and we praise God for that. Anyway, she was in the back seat of the car. We were coming home. We were tired. And she talks to herself a lot. That's, a lot of times I think that's what Down's kids do. But she was talking to herself a lot. And she's memorized the story, the Easter, and she was going, playing it through in her head again. And in the story, she was Mary in the garden, and Jesus had been resurrected. And when something's in this little head, it doesn't leave. I mean, it's implanted. You can't uproot it. It's just there. So she was in the narrative of the, the resurrection of Jesus, and she was Mary, and Mary's crying, and she's kind of even whimpering in the back. <laughs> she's crying, you know, because Jesus is gone. And so Jesus comes, and then she puts Jesus' voice in, and she says, My child, why are you leaping? <laughs> and I looked at Nettie, and I said, did, What did she just say? Why are you leaping? I, isn't it weeping? You know. But she heard leaping, and that's what it is. So a half an hour or so passes, and then she starts singing, and she goes through all the songs, the Christian songs that she knows. And this one you know very well, that she knows very well. And it's like this. It goes like this. Softly and tenderly, Jesus is. Uh-uh. <laughs> Not according to Beckett. Softly and tenderly, 
Jesus is cleaning. <laughs> and I looked at Nettie. I said, cleaning? I said, wait a minute. You know, that's pretty good theology. That'll preach. So I'm going to work out a sermon someday on that. We started getting, getting giddy, getting, we were tired. We got laughing and we did tears rolling down our feet, in our face. In life, you get tired. In fact, you get downright exhausted. Because life can be complicated. We've all heard that. We've all known it. We've felt it many times. You know what? We don't want to disappoint the people that count on us. We don't want to disappoint the people who love us and whom we love. But we want to do it all. We don't want to miss out on a thing. We won't, we can't, and we don't say no. And Jesus says, come unto me, all of you who labor and are tired, because I'll be your rest. Our worship guide this morning if you look at it again, it says, come on home. Welcome in. Come with your load of troubles, carrying your bundle of doubts to a place of healing. Bring them to God. A God, what? Who cares? Who lightens our load? Who gives us rest and hope and courage and a song? Don't you love that? A song. Doesn't that sound glorious right about now to you? I mean, it does to me. Isn't that what we really need? Isn't that a lot of the solution? Rest. Not slothfulness, not laziness, but Sabbath. Rest. There's a good reason that God directs us to observe a Sabbath. Jesus is our rest, not Sean Hannity, not Laura Ingram, not Anderson Cooper, not Don Lemon, not The View, The Five, or anyone else on TV. Jesus is our rest. Amen? Jesus is our rest. You know, don't we all naturally get concerned when we see our loved ones stressed out? Our spouse, our kids, our parents, our friends looking exhausted. You can tell. You can look in people's eyes. You know when they're shot. They're exhausted. In the well-known story, Matthew 5, 6, and 7, the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus talks about worry. And in nine verses, Jesus uses the word worry or worrying six times in nine little verses. And Jesus says, don't worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow, listen to this. You interpret it anyway. Tomorrow will worry about itself. What's that mean? Don't worry about tomorrow. Oh, did I fail to mention in our list the mass shootings, the midterm elections, and climate change? And if that's not enough, if that's not enough to keep you up at night and to trouble your spirit, I'm going to say it. The worldwide church that calls itself United Methodists, the memberships and the friendships that we have forged for decades with brothers and sisters, the directions that we have trusted, the pathways that we have traveled, the traditions that we have enjoyed in our Wesleyan heritage and denomination. Friends, you know it as well as I do, are unraveling and even crumbling before our very eyes. And then we find ourselves exhausted. And Jesus just wants to help. Come to me. Don't go to all these other places. Come to me. Every one of you who is weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. You know what the Pharisees wanted to do? They wanted to tie the burdens on the backs of the people because they had control over them. And Jesus says, take them off. Come to me. I'll take them off. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. As I said, I had no idea what Hope was going to sing this morning, 
But the second song, Give Me Your Tired, Your Poor, Your Huddled Masses, you know where that comes from, I hope. Written by Emma Lazarus in 1886, these words today are inscribed on the pedestal of the Statue of Liberty. The line that she's saying, yearning to breathe free. And yes, I do understand that it was a message to those coming into our country from foreign lands, but I think it can also apply to the Church of Christ today. Breathe. Learning to, yearning to be, breathe free. Well, I'm not done with my list yet. You're going to hear a few more. Because emotional exhaustion just doesn't have to be the stuff of newscasts and media. It can be your every day. The day-to-day -day living, the shopping list, the birthday cards, the get-well cards, the graduation cards that needs to be addressed and mailed. There's church meetings and services to be attended, and company is coming, and preparations need completing, and the clock keeps ticking, and the days of the week pass on and on, marching on, and it's all you can do to hold it together. Oh, by the way, the tires need rotating, the inspection needs to be done, the registration has to be mailed in. Don't forget the oil change. Don't forget to vote. Don't forget to stain the deck. The bird seed is running out. The lawn needs mowing. The garden beds need weeding. And that's just a little bit of it. Oh, the ironing is stacking up. The laundry needs done. You've been invited to a wedding and then throw in a funeral with calling hours. How do we do it? I'm going to say it again. It's, it's, a, it's a miracle. We haven't lost our ever-loving minds. You don't have time to get sick. That's not a day off. There are some things, yes, that we have to plan for the future. But we need to let go of the worry. And it's like that wonderful song that Carrie Underwood sang in 2005, Jesus, take the wheel. Jesus, take the wheel. I can't do it anymore. And at the risk of sounding trite, you've heard the saying before, you just got to let go and let God and trust beyond yourself. It means trusting God for some divine intervention. Because the God who loves you and me desires to free his children from these burdens. And the rest that Jesus promises is love and healing. That's what he gives. Jesus doesn't promise the end of all of our labors, but God takes meaningless, worrisome, wearisome toil, and he changes that into spiritual blessing and purpose and productivity. And he says, come to me. If you don't hear anything else today, please hear that. Come to me, Jesus says. Now, do I still turn on the TV? <laughs> yeah. Of course I do. But not as much. And not for as long. Because I've replaced it with something. And those of you who are friends of mine on Facebook will know what I'm saying. And those who aren't, you'll hear it right now. I've replaced that with something else. Yes, the TV goes on, but it's not as long. And Nettie and I go out on our front porch, and we've got some new friends. Friends that absolutely delight us. They come running when they see us on a porch out there. Their names are Sadie and Freya and Happy and Nash and Titus and Bella and Digger and Winnie and Piper. I know them all. Can't tell you their parents' names. But I know these four-legged fur creatures. And I love them. And I think, call me nuts, I don't care. But I think God uses these gentle, energetic, loving, slobbering, loyal dogs to teach me and Nettie a lesson. They help us to breathe. Help us to breathe. They let us smile. And I got one dog, Freya. She's a huge Alaskan shepherd, which is mostly Malamute and German shepherd. She's 100 pounds, and she... She takes, when she wants her two milk bones, she knows she gets two, she puts this monstrous paw right on my arm, you know, trying to give her the treats. 
And you know this, you've all heard it. But I think there's something to it. That dog spelled backward is still God. One final thing. Friends, maybe you can. I know I can't. I cannot live in the extremes. Roller coasters are meant for amusement parks, not my life. I don't want to live there. Political news, divisions in churches and families and relationships, friends are exhausting. Health issues, never-ending treatments and a diagnosis that you're waiting for results in that. Burning at both ends. And Jesus says, come to me with your burdens and I'll give you rest. And Jesus just wants us to come. That's the operative word, come. Just as I am, without what? But that thy blood was shed for me. And that thou bidst me come to thee, O Lamb of God, I come. Let's pray. Forgive us, Father, for failing to come. We confess that we are oftentimes dismayed by a crisis far and near in our homeland, in our countries, around the world, in our neighborhoods, in our own families. And yet, for generations, for all time, you have been our God. As Mickey led us in our song, you are our help in ages past. And so you will be our God of hope in years to come. And so whatever voices would clamor to be heard, whatever distractions would seek to control our minds, help us to remember the words of your Son. To come, all of us who are weary, tired and burdened, then help us to breathe in your divine breath. I pray this sincerely, genuinely, O oh God, in the name and in the spirit of Jesus. Amen. Let us sing our closing hymn.
let your light shine before others, that men will see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Go in peace and serve the Lord in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit.